All right, so we're about to start our next unit, which will take us into um, how the Earth exists in our solar system and in our universe. And one of the first things we'll talk about is apparent motion. To begin this topic, I want to look at an optical illusion. Now, an optical illusion is when your brain interprets something that's really not happening. So take a look at this image. This image is really a static image. There's no motion in the image. It's not a moving image. It's your brain that's interpreting the uh, lines or the shapes that are drawn and giving you a sense of motion that really doesn't exist. It's a trick. You're tricking your brain. Same thing with this image. None of these shapes are moving. But when you look at it and you stare at it, you get the sense of motion as you move your head back and forth. There's that sense. That's an optical illusion because your brain is being tricked. Let's talk about one of the greatest optical illusions that you've seen every day in your life. And it's this. The sun appearing to rise in the east and the sun appearing to set in the west. This is an optical illusion. Yeah, not quite as optical illusion-y as the two examples I gave you, or 3D uh, image right? that's in a pattern. Um, but this is still an illusion. We call this an apparent motion. And the reason why we call it an apparent motion is because the sun never moves. The sun is not the object that's moving. The earth is really the one that moves. To give you an example, not sun related, but if you were out in a place where there was low enough light and you could see the stars and you were able to track their motion over a certain period of time, they would appear like this, streaks in the sky. The reason they look like streaks is because they're stationary and the earth is moving. So we get that sense of motion because the earth is the one that's moving. So that's, that's often referred to as apparent motion. So apparent daily motion is when the celestial objects, such as the sun, the moon, stars, and other planets, appear to move across the sky. And the purpose of this video is to introduce you to not only some of those motions, but what are the different types of celestial objects that we can see. So let's start with stars. The daily motion of stars would be um, across the sky in an arc. An arc is a circular shape, right? And this motion occurs at a constant rate of approximately 15 degrees an hour or 360 degrees in 24 hours. Any movement in this pattern is called daily motion. So if I track the stars at night, while I was looking south, so I'm looking south in a compass, I would see them travel across the sky, rising in the east and setting in the west, if I'm looking south. So that would be the general pattern of any star in the sky at night would rise in the east and set in the west. If I was looking east, okay, I would see all of the stars in the sky as they appear over the horizon rising they would be rising and they're rising if i'm in the northern hemisphere in a pattern that's taking them to the northeast because they're rising in the east and setting in the west so they go across the sky in this general direction but if i'm looking east that's going to uh, show me stars rising okay if i look to the west now i'm going to see stars setting because they're setting in this direction and they're going to be setting in this general path if I'm in a northern latitude. Okay, because the west is um, where everything seems to disappear over that horizon. And finally, if I'm looking north in the northern hemisphere, it's going to appear that all the stars, for one, are orbiting around Polaris but they're also orbiting in such a way that they just kind of do this circle. Because I'm looking towards the North Pole, so the stars appear to move in this circular pattern. They never really rise or set. They just kind of go in a big circle. 
Now let's talk about the planets. Okay, as seen from Earth. The planets exhibit daily motion similar to stars. That just means that they rise and set, just like all the stars do. But over weeks to months, there are some planets that appear to move backwards with respect to the stars around them. So let's take Mars for example. All right, here's the planet Mars, and instead of looking at the planet, we're going to use this big red dot. If I were to watch Mars from Earth over the course of a couple of months. This is what Mars would be doing. All right. This is over time. It would appear that Mars is traveling in this direction, right? And then all of a sudden, Mars would go backwards. And then all of a sudden, it would go back the other way. So this weird motion actually has a name. This is called retrograde motion. And retrograde motion. Is an apparent motion. It's not a real motion. It's just something that appears from Earth, because Mars, for example, is further out from the Sun. It revolves around the Sun at a slower rate. So, because it revolves at a slower rate, it looks like it stops and goes backwards in its re revolution around the Sun. But that's only from Earth's position. So, from Earth, some planets look like they travel. Backwards, then forwards, then backwards again. Now, our moon, our moon factors into this. If you were to watch the moon at night, it would rise in the east, just like everything. It rises in the east, travels across the sky in an arc, and then eventually will set in the west. So, the moon follows the same set of circumstances as stars and planets. The only difference is, every day in a cycle, in a moon phase cycle, it appears to rise about 50 minutes later each day, and each day that it rises in a lunar cycle, it shifts further to the east. We'll talk about that more when we do look at moon phases and how the moon moves. And our last apparent motion, the one we started with, is motion of the sun. The motion of the sun moves in an arc across the sky, rising in the east and setting in the west. It reaches the highest point at any time at noon, and that time where it's at its highest is always the noon position. So if you look at how the sun rises and sets over the course of the year, even though it's always an arc, it doesn't always have the same length in its path. And one of the reasons why seasons exist and we have differences in temperature during those seasons is because the path that the sun takes during different times of the year is longer in the summer and shorter in the winter, which winds up delivering more heat in the summer and less heat in the winter. Going back to why this is called apparent motion is because the sun is stationary and because the earth is tilted, when the earth is tilted towards the sun in the summer, the path is longer. When the, sun is, when the earth is tilted away from the sun in the winter, the path is shorter. So all of these motions are apparent because it's the earth's motion and tilt that really determines what we see. So that's it for now, and thanks for watching.